if you aren't a violent person or have the capabilities of being violent, you will not be a good 60 runner. Get so long right, big motion. In this video, I'm gonna be talking about the things that helped me get better in my 60 just from last season, like in January when I opened up to right now in December when I opened up in the 60. And then also I'll be talking about the three phases of the 60 meter race that I had to work on. It made me a little bit better in the 60. All right, so the three phases in the 60 is acceleration, transition, and top end speed. These are like the three things that you need to focus on. Like you have these same like phases in the 100, but in the 60, they just come up way quicker. So first is acceleration. If you wanna be good in a 60 or at least have a chance in the 60, you have to be able to accelerate good. In the 100, you can somewhat get away with it because the race is just so much longer compared to the 60. But in the 60, you gotta get this right. In my opinion, the best way to work on acceleration is being stronger. So weight room wise, while you can like get away with it in 100, in the 60, you have to like be strong in the weight room or you just won't have the power to even accelerate with the best people that run the 60. And then also like you can do things like pull sleds and run heels. This helps with your acceleration a lot when you run a 60. And then secondly is like transitioning. So it's that part from where you go from acceleration to like going up into top end speed. And this is, in my opinion, the most important part of like the 60, the 100, the 200, like the 400, you can just go out there and run it in Timberland boots and you'll still be good. But like transitioning in the 60 is the most important part. Like if you don't have a smooth transition from acceleration to top end speed, you will lose a lot of time right there. And that's like where you will lose the race. Cause you can somewhat have a bad start and still win just having like a great transition. So like with the transition part, it's like where you go and you come up and you, know, you just push your hips in the front and then just pick your legs up and down rather than just running. Cause a lot of people, when they come to the 60, they think, all right, if I just get out there and I get out fast and I just start running, I'm a win or I'm gonna run a good time. And I tried this, like I had the speed to run fast in the 60, but I had no race plan. So I went out there and I ran 704. And this when I opened up in January of this year, I was like, dang bro, I'm way faster than 704. And I ran it at altitude. So it converted to like a 706. But I was like, dog, what am I doing wrong? So I, I like took some time and I was like, dang, there was like no transition. I like had a decent start. I was like somewhat behind though. And once I was behind, I just stood up and started running like no transition, like to top end speed. And then I was just doomed from there. Like you will lose the race right there. And then lastly, it's top end speed. Once you hit about like 45 meters, you will be standing up in a 60. And like, you just gotta hold it and relax. A lot of people panic cause they may not be in the front, but you can't panic. Like if you relax and the people in front of you, they will come back to you if you like using good mechanics. And a lot of people are like, oh, what does good mechanics look like? Good mechanics looks like whatever gets you to the line first. There is no set form that you should have. So people say, oh, Christian Coleman looks like this when he run, or this person looks like this. You're not gonna look like Christian Coleman because you aren't Christian Coleman. Everybody's body is different. Everybody have different size ligaments and limbs and things of that nature. So nobody's gonna look the same when they run. You just gotta figure out what works for you and what's gonna get you to the line first. So you gotta work on like your top end speed and you can work on your top end speed by doing like speed endurance stuff. Like do, do like 120s, like 120s. When you come off that curve and then you just stand up and just go that's how I know I would be like pretty decent in like the 60, the 100, the 200. It's cause like top end speed, I know I have it. I just have to work on those first two phases of the 60. And I did that a little bit. And yeah, like that gets you right doing like 120s, doing like 80s where you coming out your drive phase, transitioning and standing up and just picking them up and putting them down, not cycling, just going up and down, hitting the ground, applying force. When you landing and hitting the ground, making sure like your leg is landing straight and your knee is not bent and you just coming up and going back down. Like there's a lot of things like that that you can do to get way better in the 60. And like things that helps me get better in the 60, the most important thing is paying attention to details. Like when I was training last year, it was just on some, I'm just running at practice. We do block starts, I'm just doing a block start. Whatever feel good, it feel good. But now it's like they record every rep and I ain't just getting a video to post it. Like I'm getting a video to see like where can I take off more time, like looking at my block angle, seeing where like 
projection angles I'm pushing from and like looking at them with my coach to see how I can get better at them. So like paying attention to detail, seeing like what my arm is doing, my first few steps, seeing what my arms are doing at the end, see where my legs are and, and like relative to my arms and just things of that nature. Like a lot of people don't pay attention to details. They just be out there just going through the motion, not paying attention to what they're doing. So that's why a lot of times when people go to meets, they be super nervous because they have no idea how they're going to do at the meet. But me, on the other hand, I can like give you a great estimate of exactly what I'm gonna run at every single track meet when I go to it because I really pay attention in practice. I'm like, all right, I ran this in practice. I'm gonna put this together at the meet so I should be able to run this time. And I usually be right around that time every time. So that's something that a lot of people take for granted is paying attention to details. And another thing that helped me run, get better in a 60, because when I opened up last season, I ran 704. When I opened up this season, I ran seven, I mean, 676. And it was just getting stronger. Like weight room wise, I got way stronger from last year. Like I was like benching like 210 last year. Now I done benched 250. I was power cleaning like 215 last year. Now I'm power cleaning 255. I was squatting like what, 295 last year. Now I'm squatting 365. So getting way stronger in the weight room. And I, I, I can squat more than 365. That was just like the most I went up to. But getting stronger in the weight room, especially when it comes to running shorter distances, is gonna help you a lot. Especially if you applying that force correctly, you will be like, you will be a whole different beast. And that was like the biggest thing that I'll say helps me in my 60s was getting stronger. Like getting stronger and applying that strength. Because a lot of people are the strongest people on earth, but when, they, when it comes to running, they don't apply that strength the right way. And I just figured out like how I could apply it the right way. And then I did that. So that's like what helps me a lot in the 60, bro. And it's gonna help me in 100. It's gonna help me in the 200. And yeah, it's gonna help me in the 400 if I decide to run a 400. So yeah, like that's all I have like to run a better 60. And if you have any questions about that, comment down below. My next video is gonna probably be how to run the indoor 400. It'll probably drop this week as well. And if you have any video suggestions, drop them down below in the comments.